Okay, here's a short summary. Make sure you can see that. Here's a little table summary of this. It doesn't have everything in there, but it may help you. What we've got is we've got a line segment. What type of line segment is that's right here? Okay, let's underline this twice so it looks a little different up here. Okay, make it a little bolder. Okay. All right, so what type of line segment is it? Definition or how to draw it. Okay, what is its point of concurrency? And what are the characteristics of that point of concurrency and of that particular set of lines? Line segment, the perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular line using the midpoint of a side as an endpoint. Okay? Draw a perpendicular line using the midpoint of a side as an endpoint. Draw a perpendicular to the side. Keep on going. What is the point of concurrency? It's called the circumcenter. The circumcenter is equal distance from each vertex. Okay? Gives you some algebra there. Angle bisector, another line segment type thing we're doing. Line using a vertex as endpoint that bisects that angle. Line using a vertex as an endpoint that bisects that angle. Okay, so draw an angle bisector. Take it. What is the point of concurrency where those three things meet? It's called the end center. The end center is equal distance from each side. Notice when we bisect the sides, we're equal distance from each vertex. When we bisect the angle, we're equal distance from each side. Figure this out. Talked about it earlier. Median. Line segment using the midpoint of a side and the opposite vertex as endpoints. It is the only one that tells you where the endpoints of that thing are and says connect the two. Vertex, opposite side, midpoint. Connect them. They're going to meet at the centroid. What's the centroid? It's the center of gravity, one-third from each side and two-thirds from each vertex. Okay? And the last one is the altitude. It's a line segment drawn from a vertex perpendicular to the opposite side. What is this point of concurrency? It is the orthocenter. Altitude is used to calculate the area. Is its significance? Okay? That's what it is. All right? I have one more other summary I'm going to put up, and then I think we're done with this. This is a long segment. Thank you for uh, being patient with it. I apologize for taking so long to get it out there. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it's useful to you. I have enjoyed teaching it. Um, here's another little summary table. I haven't used this in the past, but I think it's pretty important to figure this out. In my classes, we'll go through this. We have a demonstration we go through from uh, Geometry Sketchpad and automate it, and you'll see what happens here. But it's very important. This is some of the things you can do. It's interesting what it is. Here's the point of concurrency. What's the location of that point of concurrency for an acute triangle, obtuse triangle, and for a right triangle? Okay, you'll notice for acute, everything is interior. You notice for obtuse, anything that has to do with something perpendicular is exterior. These two, in center and centroid, they're interior all, all, all along. The things that are circ that are perpendicular, they act different. They're interior on the acute, they're exterior on obtuse, and on the right, they're opposite. The perpendicular bisector is on the hypotenuse, and the orthocenter, the altitude, is at the right angle. Okay? So what happens is this thing moves from acute to obtuse. It's moving from the interior to the exterior, and it goes through the hypotenuse to get there. Okay? This one's moving from the interior to the exterior. It goes through the right angle to get there. Okay? Now, is that important stuff for high school? No. You're a civil engineer, you're a mechanical engineer, aerospace, so forth and so on. You're looking at that kind of stuff. Movement, micro, micro geometry, micro physics, quantum physics, so forth and so on. You want to know how that stuff moves back and forth and what those point of concurrencies are. That's how they're moving. Okay, now this stuff occurs in nature. 
in the universe. It's built into the universe. We observe it and get to see it and say, wow, how can we use that to solve our problems and create new products, new processes, so forth and so on. Okay, uh, I'll give my students a little hint here. You know, the teachers do what you want to, but this looks like an excellent pop quiz as you walk in the door one day for me handing you a little table that looks like this and say, fill it out. And give you about five minutes to do so. So if you have a copy of that, you might want to hang on to that. I've enjoyed this very much. Hope you enjoy it.